social entrepreneurs are all about having that social impact as a core value of the business. Wheelchair basketball can be played by anybody. You don't have to be in a wheelchair. You don't have to have any injury or any disability. It's a sport that can help people mentally and physically. It's about helping the average person out there who can go on and have a much better quality of life. These doctors are very quick at learning. The support I've had from Unlimited is about launching something which I called the Rolling Sports Pathway, which is a technical way, really, of getting into the NHS and getting an intro into those doctors and occupational therapists. It was good to get some financial support, but also it brands you as a social entrepreneur and it adds a bit of credibility and weight to anything that I put in front of potential funders, potential sponsors, people who want to get involved. If I can teach one person wheelchair basketball, then I only help one person. But if I can teach one GP or a PE teacher wheelchair basketball, and they can reach 40, 50 people throughout their career, and they'll always have the knowledge of the sport they played. My name's Rebecca Luff. I'm an award manager for Unlimited, um, and I'm working in Brighton specifically on our Resilient Communities programme. So I find, fund and support social entrepreneurs. Knowing that it's a less affluent area of a very affluent city, we know that there are people in these communities who have noticed some problems and have some ideas for how to solve them. Growing up, having this on our doorstep, it was, it was never open. The windows were always smashed. That's when the local community suffered, really, because their space wasn't being utilised to its full no? potential. Good. So, how many have we got today? It's a bit of a miserable old day today. Just have to make do with what we've got. Is it cold in here? Would you like me to put the heating on? Because the manor is here in the centre of this community, we're now the centre for some of these social entrepreneurs who know Tanya, who know the manor, who feel comfortable dropping in for cups of tea. And naturally, they're talking to one another and starting to support one another's ventures, which is brilliant to see. So we're going to be treating patients with limited mobility. Really looking forward to that. Is that the local good. GP's clinic? Yeah. That's right. Oh, that's great. From just coming in here a few couple of years ago, mm -hmm. just giving me your um, card to start up your massage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. And now you're working alongside the the Wellsbourne Healthcare mm -hmm. Centre. It's a massive, yeah. massive Brilliant step, step yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's true. It's lovely. It's all like a big family. Did you manage to Through that network, it's nice to have someone who's done a similar thing, sharing ideas and what worked and what didn't work. And the more people come in and join us, then they feel that they're part of that community. Just cock in, cock out. Keith Turner is a great example of somebody that we've supported to grow his one-man massage business. He's now going to be providing services to the GP's practice to help people in withdrawal from opiate addiction. Massage therapy can be expensive and yet it can benefit many, many people. So I don't want the cost of it to be a barrier to people. And I'd like that to become more mainstream. So that's why I want to run a social enterprise. Hi there. Are you here for the wheelchair basketball? Yeah. Oh, nice to meet you. My name's Ricky. Oh, hi, Ricky. I'm Yoga. Are you from the Wellsbourne Health Centre? Yeah, I'm one of the GPs there. Oh, brilliant. OK, fantastic. When you finish the session, when you meet people that have got disabilities or CP or uh, amputees, you'll be able to signpost them into the sport a bit better by actually having an experience of having a go yourself. Take that shot! Shoot! Shoot it! For many, many years, deprived communities like East Brighton have had many people come in, in saying, we know what's best for you. And all of those things have come and gone. And they haven't worked, by and large, um, because they weren't generated from within the community. The reason that these groups like the Manor and Keith and Ricky's work are so important is because it's what they're good at and it's what they really want to be doing. And that's what we want to support.
it's really the whole, the collaboration, the connections. Where is the support that these people need? It's all here. And we're also starting to attract people from outside of the area who work in other less affluent areas of the city and connect with the work that's going on here. We're all role models at the end of the day, aren't we, in, in the community? You know, that's how we want our younger generation to behave when they get older. Building, you know, stronger, better communities through that work. Do some photography of the local buildings and things like that. Might do a little bit of an exercise as well. Um, on the sustainable development goals, myself, Monica and Alex to talk about talk about those. So, so just take care when you get on and off the boat. I'm born and bred in Stoke. There's a massive opportunity in using uh, the local assets like the canals to support positive wellbeing. It's just a slower pace of life, which is very conducive to helping people with stress conditions. little bits of nature out like that. Yeah, so well spotted uh, Monica. <laughs> we connect Alex. people through green exercise and arts and wellbeing with nature themes. So hopefully longer term we can help to save the NHS money. I was in a job that was unfulfilling and I thought how can I do something more purposeful. I started researching on the internet and came up with the term social enterprise which I wasn't aware of. Unlimited gave us a stepping stone with some initial funding to buy equipment and that strengthened my faith in, in how we can move forward as a project. So what we're doing is just imprinting leaf, basically picking up the, the detail of the leaf and that is how we've made these other leaves which have been fired. And you can imprint your name or... Don't worry about oh, that actually, yeah, yeah. OK, perfect. Jake asked me to get involved with his nature therapy and I absolutely loved that idea. Really looking forward to a future where we try to help people more creatively. We get people to play more. Instead of this focus on thinking that mental health has to be so serious, sometimes we can just be in the present and, and have a little play. Working with Jake and Monica is a real privilege. They're really innovative in their thinking. They are interested in more than just their project and how other projects can be linked together. What Unlimited are trying to do at the moment is connect people that work on similar things. So we're not just supporting people with award money, but there's a shared value that underpins pretty much everything that we do. It's not just based on growth and generating masses of income. It's about how they can be a little bit more creative. Some sort of action plan that we work towards. So this could be quite interesting to feed into as well, really. Yeah. Okay. So a network of it's networks. It's a network of networks of networks. Yeah. <laughs> when Alex spoke to me about funding me through Unlimited, I didn't see myself as a social entrepreneur. I just thought I was going in to do a bit of good. There are a lot of people in Stoke and Trent which are very passionate about making a difference, about making Stoke great. It has been amazing to see just that grouping together, how much more powerful your voice can be. And as I said, take over the whole of North Staffordshire. Straight pace. <laughs> Our, our offering to not only appeal to adults but to, to young youngsters as well? I think, so again, I think that with youngsters, if you were to do something around the secondary age exam pressures, that would really work really well because you'd be able to hit the secondary schools definitely and I think even going to the universities. Jake, you could be onto something, I'm not even playing because. There are some real challenges in this area, be that funding or the capacity for individuals to buy services from social entrepreneurs. So by working together, we're pooling resources rather than competing for them. It's really great to see because it's helping to motivate people, drive them forward. It's like a snowball effect. Starting a social enterprise, it can be quite a lonely place. 
Through the connection with Unlimited, linking in with other social entrepreneurs in the local area, I've personally grown in confidence from a, a relatively low position after I had my stress breakdown. But finally, we are starting to generate our own income and I am successfully running my own social enterprise. I'm Eileen Inglis and I'm an award manager for Unlimited, a UK-wide organisation that supports social entrepreneurs. So we're running a programme around the UK called Resilient Communities and we're working in... This morning's about hearing from local social entrepreneurs in Dundee about what they're doing on the ground to create change. So often people will be off for a month doing what they're doing and don't see or hear from anyone. So events like this are really great at just bringing people back into the group again. Looking in here, I see hope for others because we've got things that others could be badly doing with. And with a little help, maybe fixing something up or by painting it, or by for them coming in and working with us, they get the confidence. You want people to be happy in their home. This is where people can come and improve their house on a tight budget. We have lots of volunteers that come in and help us sort it out. Artists, home improvement and upcycling people. And by the time you've done it up, people are a lot happier and any mental health issues or health issues that they've got a lessened. So she's going to come in tomorrow and I'm going to set her up oh, with, to have a go with the, uh, one of the airbrushes because she's never used one before. She's wanting to do art. She is, she suffers with anxiety. Ah, welcome. Which... It's in the right pack then, isn't it? These are just canvases that we've repurposed and all I've done is I've primed it and started to put an image on it. The main intention is to try and get people interested in having a go at it. There's so many people out there with nothing in their lives whatsoever. And art for me has been what's kept me sane. I love it. And to see people who think they can't paint actually getting on and doing something and being pleased with what they've done, you can't beat it. It's worth all the money in the world, really. We're in one of the major areas of deprivation. Universal credit has arrived. Everyone that has any dealings to do with universal credit is skint and is suffering poverty. So this is the Lockheed Community Shop and in here we quite often meet people who are uh, wanting to improve their property, we'll get chatting, what size curtains do you need, what, is it cold of a winter and we can introduce them to the idea of putting draft excluders in. And the conversation just goes on and it's, it's sort of like our window on the high street so we can get the feel of what's going on with the people and on the other hand they know to come in and find us here. Are you going to table class? Yes, what size do you want? I'm reading three, but it's for right. funeral tomorrow. Oh, for tomorrow? Uh, I've got a couple at home, rectangular ones. Mm -hmm. Will that do? It'll do better than nothing, won't it? Mm -hmm. This is used by tenants and things in the summertime, and you'll see the chairs and tables where people can really get together. We've got produce that's growing outside, and. We started the partnership with Eileen in Unlimited and I think that has really supported us to put us on a national platform and I think work with some amazing social entrepreneurs as well locally. I've worked a lot with government, I've worked with the local authority and I've tried to promote as widely as possible through the national press the work that we're doing to really raise the profile of social entrepreneurs and to say that it's a valid occupation, it's something that is essential in developing our communities. We expect social entrepreneurs to really make a difference in tackling huge societal issues. What we're not looking at is 
the burnout that happens. As a sector, people are very uncomfortable saying that they take a wage from an organisation. I believe that we are a skilled sector, that we need to actually value ourselves more. I think it's important to share your journey with other people. It can be quite isolating when you're setting something up yourself and to understand that these are some of the challenges that you will face and here's how other people have overcome them. I think there's a lot of learning in the group that are here today and I think just sharing experiences is really positive. What do I get out of it? Sanity. Like quite a lot of people that we get involved in, I have mental health issues. And coming and just sitting and having a coffee and chewing the fat, that's all you need sometimes, you know. It's doing away with social isolation. This is my go-to place. I try to sneak over here as often as I can with a cup of tea and just wander through the woods and then sit by the river. This is Cannon Valley Organic Adventures and we took the site on a year ago with a view to, to cutting it back and maintaining it, uh, growing fruit and vegetables for the local community to come in and pick and raising awareness of conservation. We couldn't access any plans, any documents. So as we were cutting it back, you know, we were discovering there was a fence and a bridge and a pond. We had an approved college now. We deliver a wide range of courses and social prescription as well. So doctors refer people to us for well-being. Um, physical and, and mental health problems. And with these hazels, yeah. we're going to cut them, cut them at an angle and drop them down. And what I do then was open a lot of light up in there then, look. OK? Yeah. So I'm trying to learn coppice in like and hedge laying, so I'm trying to have a look at that now. I'm on my third course now, like. I just feel more alive. It's, it's, it's either that or I will sit down on a set and watch telly all day. Now I've started coming down, yeah? I'm out more and I'm doing more. I get a lot of pleasure out of it. Right, yeah, so we make the bird feeder. Um, I'd recycle bottles. Oh, like that, um, yeah? Through them. The one end of the bib piece, it's got two holes in the bottom. A large part of what we do is social prescription, but we haven't got those skills here in Wales yet. Unlimited. That's been really useful for me because meeting up with other people in similar situations, then you can learn from their mistakes. You don't have to cut it yet, but then, so the bottom two holes. We are in a very deprived area. You have a lot of economic inactivity. I feel that the system doesn't know these people well enough to be able to meet their needs. Whereas in an environment like this, we're really informal. They come in, we welcome them in, um, and we focus on their strengths until they feel ready to put that structure in place themselves. You're not just working on health and well-being. then. You know, you're sort of helping them in terms of employability and education. Coming down, yeah, it's just peaceful and getting your thoughts together. It's been like meditating, really, you know. We've been through a lot together, a lot of ups and downs. And Grace's course then that she's just designed, that we've sent for accreditation, a massive part of that is Grace being able to explain to the mental health sector how they let her down and how they contributed to her ill health and how they can make it better. You'd be surprised. We'd go in and see professional people. They'd find out that you had schizophrenia. The first thing they'd be like, are you going to stab us? And they're like, what? I want to help people with mental health problems. And that's what the course is about. Many of the people we work with are breaking new ground, challenging the system. 
A lot of the support traditionally in Wales has been more focused on outputs rather than outcomes. We're really interested in supporting people and the impact they make, so we measure their success on the difference they're making to the people around them or the communities they serve, rather than the number of activities that they're running. The good thing about being based in Wales is the fact that we can reach connections quite quickly. So we can reach decision makers or investors, potentially maybe more quickly in other parts of the UK. Yeah. And we're a good place to test ideas. The first School Leavers Careers app is being built in Wales by young Welsh people. So once you start talking and using that narrative, you know, other Welsh people are kind of listening. My Future is a careers app that connects school leavers with career opportunities. So those who are not going to university and going down the UCAS route, it's the alternative for them in the valleys. They bring this kind of generational belief that there's no opportunities for them and they're destined to maybe just do low paid, low skilled jobs. They don't have 10, 20, 30 years of experience. This is who they are. So why can't in just one swipe that be enough to mobilize them towards the world of work? Because they can track pizza from their sofa. They can track Amazon parcels. Why does it need to be any harder than that? It is only me, you know, running the whole of this and can lead this forward. So Unlimited give me that, that support package. We're also giving you access to a network of other social entrepreneurs. We're all going through the same narrative of trying to make change for the better and trying to drive it from the bottom up. And a lot of our courses can be delivered to um, children from 14 and over. When I came into this project, it was such a difficult time for me, just nurturing nature really throughout that process. It made me a lot stronger, it made me resilient. That's my motivation. It's not just to give something back, but to help other people experience that. Our goal is to buy the place by 2021. They're constantly in fear that we're going to lose the land so I can take that fear away from them, you know? And then they know then that it's, it's always going to be in the hands of the community.